Hey guys, welcome to the shop. On today's agenda, I'm going to make a sheath for this knife. Now, I've made this knife a while back, and I've been using it essentially as a utility knife in the house, and I absolutely love the blade. I haven't been able to carry it yet because I haven't made a sheath. Now, normally I make a leather sheath for my knives, and I love the look of leather, the traditional feel, the aesthetics. However, when making this knife, I really talked about functionality, simplicity, ease of use, trumping aesthetics. And this is one area where I'm kind of going to veer from that philosophy just a little bit. I'm going to make a Kydex leather hybrid holster. Now, I hate the look of this sheet, but I love its functionality. Minus this clip, this clip is a little bit uncomfortable. But regardless of that, I've had this knife for over a decade. I bought it brand new when it came out, and this is a Seki Sog. So it's lived in its Kydex sheath, and it doesn't have an ounce of rust on it. Now, one part that's because this is a stainless steel and it's been coated. The other part is that Kydex just doesn't hold moisture like leather does. So leather is good to store your knife while you're out in the field, but when you get back home, you should really store a high carbon steel like this you shouldn't store it inside of your leather sheath, but I, I want to be able to do that. It protects the blade. I have a big drawer full of all my knives where I kind of just throw these in here. And I like them to be in a sheath so that they don't get scratched and, and chip at the blade and all that stuff. So the plan is to make a Kydex sheath similar to this, and then we're going to wrap it in leather. So you have the functionality of Kydex with the look and feel of traditional leather. That's the plan. I found this piece of Kydex on Amazon and it's just brown. So I think it will hide nicely when I do my brown leather. It won't stand out quite like black wood. Other than that, it's just the thinnest I could find. And I want to say it's, I don't know, whatever. It was like 0.08 thickness. I, I don't know. It was the thinnest I could find because really I, it's not going to be structural. The leather is going to be the more structural component. This is just going to give it a moisture barrier and then a little bit of retention as well. And then this monstrosity right here is my quickly made Kydex press. I haven't used it yet. Like I said, I'm not a big Kydex guy. I don't, I don't make a lot of Kydex holsters and sheaths. So I'm hoping this is going to work. It's all made from scraps minus the foam knee boards that I bought. So I'm like a whopping $4 into this entire build. I had the wood. I had the hinge. Everything else was scrap. I bought these for $2 each, these little knee bars. So... $4, I think it's going to fit. I think it's going to work nicely. It's got a really nice snug fit. I'm going to go inside the house. I'm going to get this in the oven. First, I'm going to cut it because I don't need this whole section right here. Cut it to shape, and then we are going to sandwich the knife and first make our Kydex liner for this sheath build. I'm going to set this to 250. See, I've got my Kydex cut out here. This metal baking tray. I'm going to throw this in the oven. Let that get nice and hot. Got my press, and then I've taken the knife and I've wrapped it in just a little bit of saran wrap. It's going to give just a little bit of space and then also protect the blade when I'm doing the press. I'm going right here. Oh, yeah, that's going to be nice. I can feel. The foam nicely molds around that knife. It's going to look pretty good. I've got some clamps here just in case. I'm probably just going to hold it. Shouldn't take that long. Maybe 10, 20 seconds to get it to form. And this might take a time or two. Like I said, I'm not the professional on Kydex in the least bit. But I have done before to good results. So, here goes. I think we are at the right temp here. Pull this out. Set this down. Let's see about right here. Bring this fold over. Come on down. Give that a squeeze. Hold it for a little bit here. I'm putting a good amount of weight on it. Like here. Right. I think 
that will work very nicely. You can see it's not completely molded into every nook and cranny. That's not what it's going for. It is perfectly straight. Yeah, press work great. Very nice. All right, this came out perfectly. Just what I was looking for. The next step is come in, clean this up, get it to final shape. I'm actually going to remove almost all the material here by the handle on the front side. The back side, I'm going to leave enough kydex to attach this clip. I think originally these are meant for inside the waistband holsters, but they're going to work perfectly in this application. Now, a belt loop or a loop on your sheath where your belt goes through is a great way to securely attach the holster to yourself. However, I must say, I don't like having to unstring my belt, especially if I have a gun on my right side. Every single time I want to take off or put on my knife. So I really like to have an attachment method that doesn't require me undoing my belt. This is going to attach right here. Again, I'm going to left hand on this. So it's actually going to be here. Left hand draw because I always have my gun on my right, knife on my left. And that's going to be perfect. So I'll keep this plastic here. I'm actually probably going to heat it up, get rid of this form because I don't want it to be so close to the knife. I'm actually going to flatten it out. Bring it a little bit away from the knife, just so the wood isn't touching this. And then all this section will come off. This whole section I'm going to dremel off. And of course, cut this square to final shape. So this nubbin here on the sheath is going to be what I'm going to use actually as my retention. It's going to index right on the finger choil here, the guard, if you want to call it. And so I'm going to come above that when I cut. So that's what I'm going to use to have this thing just lock in. That's the plan. Hopefully that works nicely. And then I'm going to need leave enough room for Chicago screws is what I like to use all the way down. Give me multiple attachment methods, things I can put onto the sheath if I so choose in the future. If I want to do a horizontal carry, be easy enough with those Chicago screws. Come in with a strap of leather, put it right here, and go in horizontally. Should be nice. Just yeah, leave myself plenty of room here when I do my first cut. Because I always take off material, put the material back on. It isn't always as easy. I'm trying to feel where that blade is. Come a good half inch off that. Something like that. And then let's see, this is the side I'm keeping, which means all of this, all of this will come off. All that. All right, let's go cut. That. Looks like my drive wheel came loose and flung off. Nothing too big. I probably could fix it right now, but I want to get on with the sheath. So, yeah, get on later. Kind of buggered up that section right there. Nothing too big.
I'm almost there. You can see that I beveled this edge right here. That allows this finger guard to slip in, and then once I put a Chicago screw at this spot, it will give you the retention you're looking for, and it slides in and out there easily. I don't want to take the strand wrap off because, as I've learned in the past, when you are sanding on this, the inside of this gets just chock full of grit and sandpaper, and then you stick your knife in there and it scratches the crap out of it. So, I need to heat this up and flatten this section, bring it away from the handle a little bit, because right now it's touching the handle, and I am going to attach screws here, so I definitely need to make room for all of that. And then I need to get all the crap with some compressed air out of this. It should be good. Drill some holes here and then wrap it in leather. I don't want any heat to get onto this section right here because that's what's using my retention. So I'm going to cover that with my thumb. Hopefully my thumb doesn't get too hot. I just want to straighten out this angle that away from the rest of the sheath so nothing else gets deformed. This should take just a few seconds here. Moment of truth, let's see how it fits. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Great retention. Slides right out. Goes in nice. That'll be good. But it's ugly. It's ugly. Let's go get this thing wrapped in leather. Now it's time to get to the leather side. Now I had a piece of scrap leather that I used to make a template for this. You can see how that's gonna fit over there. It was already had some carving on there. I don't know if I'm gonna carve this or not. I might kind of go with this pattern or something completely different, but you can see how it goes high on this section on the handle, and I don't have the knife with me on hand, but you'll see later on how this is gonna protect the wood handle when it's on your belt about only you know an inch or so of the handle actually sticks up above this and I'll give it some excellent protection while still being easy enough to draw out. So this leather is incredibly thick and I have a thinner section right here. Now this is horsehide. Horsehide is a lot denser than cowhide, a lot stronger too. But if you look at the difference here in thickness, you can see this stuff is about half as thick. So I'll put the template on here and trace it out and get it to cutting. Find a good section here, make sure there's no holes. You can see how from the tanning process they use nails or staples. So make sure you don't want to get any of that on to your sheath. I'll just trace this out. I'm going to use a Dremel and a sanding drum to get this radius right here. Keep the speed low, otherwise you'll burn it. This does not smell great, by the way. Here is the skin of the sheath, and you know what? I decided that I am going to attempt to do some stamping in it. Worst case scenario, I do not like it, and I start over. 
not very hard to get to this section right here. Now, you can see I kind of was playing around with this kind of scaly look. I'm going to go with that. I like the border on here minus the little half moons. I'm going to X me on that. And I'll stamp Pharaoh in writing up here. And that'll be it. See how it goes. First thing to do is stamp the border. So I'm going to case this lightly. Just some water. So the edges of this have been cased. I'm going to come in with this texturing stamp. And what this is going to do is when I go to stain this, the stain will really get into all the nooks and crannies created by this stamp, and it will make it look darker. So I'm going to come in probably just about a half inch completely around the border. And I'm just going to go pretty fast here. border of this is completed. As I was stamping it, I was hitting it harder towards the edge, and as I came towards the center of the sheath, I lightened up on the hits, and that should give a little bit of a fade. It's not terribly apparent at the moment, but when I go to put the stain on, I'm hoping to see it have a little bit darker effect towards the edge, and as we come in, maybe get a little bit lighter. We'll see. Next step is to do this somewhat dragon skin fish scaly effect. Scratch that, I'm going to stamp in F-E-R-O right here to have my pharaoh knives. Go on F E R and then O. I always want to line these up before stamping, make sure it's going to fit. Very first one here, F. These have a little dot on them, let you know which way to stamp it. You want that dot to be in the lower left corner. Get that nice black. There's our F. And then what I like to do is stick that right there so I know exactly where it is. And come in with the E. Now line it up. And try and get it as straight as possible. Hold it there. Tapping. E, I'll go a little bit darker. There it is. Let's stick this here. Line up my R. And so on. Okay, there's my little ferrule. And then I'm going to actually come in and decided I will do the scaly texture on the body here and then up here I'm just going to continue with the kind of this background texturing. Now comes the part where I can really mess it up and that's doing this pattern. You can see when I was just practicing here if you start getting your gaps wrong it kind of loses the effect. But I found it's easier to start on the bottom than it is to start on the top and go down. So you start at the bottom, work your way up. Seems a bit easier to line up the stamp. And then to make sure I'm keeping everything square and straight, I'm just going to use this straight edge. This is just some brass rod uh, for pin material, but it's got a nice straight edge and it's right here. So I'm just going to lay this down and I will lay down my first row. Just using this uh, egg. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's an egg. Lay it across horizontally and then I will work my way up.
Here it is all finished up. That's the back side. You can see what the stamping did to it. How much it bent this piece of leather. And then here's the front. It's not perfect, but I think once it's all stained and bent over the Kydex liner, it's going to look really cool. At least that's the hope. Like I said, I can always redo this piece if I need to. But I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to drill up some holes and get it fit. Here's the finished. Here we have the finished skin, and I'm going to stain it. I've actually had a great success with just a wood stain. So we'll put it on heavy and see how it does. It's got a cool pattern. The pattern comes out more with the stain. I think it's going to look really nice. Here it is, the sheath, all assembled. Last thing I knew is take some sandpaper and just touch up the seam. I think that this is gonna be really nice. You can see I've got the liner inside of the leather. The color match is pretty darn close. This leather actually lightened up, and if I wanted to, I could come back in and add additional stain to it, because it hasn't been sealed yet. But I'm just gonna come in real quick, clean this up with some 400 grit. And it'll be done. I do need to, anytime you sand on a sheath like this with Kydex in it, you need to make sure you blow it out with air. Otherwise, when you stick your knife in there, it is going to get all scratched up from the sanding particles of the paper. This is just about done. I like it a lot. I think it's going to be really good. Left-handed. Come right here on my belt. Put the knife right in there. It's going to be great. I do have two things I want to add to this though. The first is a ceramic rod. I like a ceramic rod to touch up the edge. And then the other thing is, just because I have it, is a ferro rod for fire starting. So I'm going to find a way to attach that. I'm trying to think where exactly I want to put it on this sheath. It's probably going to go on the outside. I don't know do I want on the outside or the inside. Well, I'll make it so it can be either way. You can choose. And that way I can find out which way I like more. And then also be removable if I end up not wanting it at all. I can just take it off. If it's starting to snag on stuff too much or something like that. Cut out this piece of antler, and it is going to be the handle for my ferro rod, ceramic rod accessory that will go on the back of the sheath. So I'm just going to drill a hole through this, and then I'll stick these in, epoxy them in so they're tight, and put it on the back of the sheath. will fit in something. This ferro rod's a little bit larger outside diameter. But it looks something like that. What happens when you grind ferro rod? Some good sparks. Kind of cool. Just finished putting on another coat of stain. I did want it just a tad bit darker. And I gotta say, I'm glad that I did because this color is definitely better than what it was. It really matches the Kydex. You can't really tell it's there at all. You can see on this back end, my little Kydex Ferro Cerro Rod Holder works perfectly. I like it in the back, 
from the front you can't even see it in the least bit but you know it's there ready when you need it the clip it actually is a really nice clip it's got a little bit of a adjustability here i'm going to come in and tighten it i haven't come in and done any thread locker and all of these which i need to do just because i wasn't 100 percent sure where i wanted this to be but i will tighten these up i'll put some thread locker on so they don't ever come out this is exactly the orientation that i like it the retention on it is just perfect that knife is not coming out in the least bit until you want it to it just locks in beautifully right on the finger guard you can see how I beveled those out and when you stick this thing in it just indexes in there and then it pinches that guard and it, it is locked in there perfectly hope you guys like that I had a really fun time building it it was a little bit of a trial by error but the end product is gorgeous really really stoked with how it came out thanks for watching guys take care